Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is the captain speaking. Uh, just about ready to depart. We should be away on schedule in the next couple of minutes or so. Please make yourselves comfortable. I do hope you enjoy the flight. Hi Pink Stoners, today on Pilot Talk, we're sparking a conversation and taking flight with Eliza, an influencer, mom, and stoner. I am Eliza Romero, and I am the fashion blogger and pop culture critic behind Aesthetic Distance. I write about everything. Um, my last couple of blog posts were about my prediction that this is the end of the Facebook era. I've written about net neutrality. Um, and I recently wrote an article called Weed the People, the case for full le- legalization. Nice, nice, nice. So tell me a little about that article because that's how we actually found you. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> thank, first of all, thank you so much for reading it. Um, I've been, <laughs> I've been curious about policies regarding weed and why it was outlawed the way it was when it's not even dangerous. You know, we have we have things like alcohol and cigarettes, which are legal, but so much more dangerous and unhealthy and, and even deadly for you. Um, mm-hmm. So I had a sneaking suspicion that a lot of it had to do with racism, but I had to do some research since... Um, I wanted to research it to find out if I was right, and I wrote about I write about race for my blog a lot. So this is something that I wanted to learn more about, and uh, if I was right, I would write a piece on it. And as it turned out, I was right. Um, I don't know if you know the history of it, but it, it really started with, with Mexican immigration in like the early 1900s. And mm-hmm. then um, in the 1970s, you had President Nixon denouncing pretty much anything that wasn't alcohol because he considered Asian and Middle Eastern nations hopeless and, um, I'm going to quote him, developmentally retarded compared to the strong white races who drank heavily. His words. Mm. Wow. And then, of course, you know, it ha- it continues um, present day with racism against blacks and Latinos. So I think that people who are opposed to legal weed are... One, they're hypocrites because they don't seem to have any objection to alcohol or big pharma or cigarettes. And two, they just don't like the kinds of people who use weed, so they just want to see them punished. And that's mm-hmm. that's pretty much what my article is about. Wow. Um, definitely, I incredibly agree. I definitely learned a lot and I took a lot from it. Um <clears throat> I appreciate the fact that you as a fashion blogger, you're using your platform to educate through cannabis. Um, Thank you. And I feel like that's going to be the only way that it starts to change is through education. Um, Mm -hmm. So people like you are, you know, writing about it and informing everyone. You know, we're hosting brunch and discussing this type of thing. Um, You have TV networks like Viceland who has so yeah. many different mm-hmm. shows, you know, that pushes the, the cannabis agenda. I mean, even Netflix now has a comedy series about a weed store, a dispensary store, like, with, like, Kathy Bates. Like, that is just so, like, wow. <laughs> like, this is where we are. So, you know, the only way to keep pushing the agenda is to educate, educate, educate. Education so, and, and, like, bought, yeah. And branding. Like, for example, your website is, like, uh-huh. the perfect kind of branding for women, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. It's, Thanks. It's, yeah, very, we... it's very millennial-focused. It's very millennial-friendly. Uh-huh. It's got that perfect uh-huh. shade of pink that everybody loves, you know? Uh-huh. It's like that yes. hepto-bismol pink. <laughs> and it's just yep. so eye-catching. And it's very... Um, the word, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say it's like, it's cozy looking. <laughs> All the photos are so cozy looking. Cozy looking, I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, very shortly we will be ready for departure, so all your mobile phones and electronic devices should be switched off. Please make sure your seatbelt is not fastened and do make yourself comfortable. Um, so, can you describe your relationship with cannabis? We started dating in high school. Um, I believe it was freshman year, high school in New Orleans, 
and um, uh, it was actually the summer between freshman and sophomore year in New Orleans, and then in college we were um, a little bit more committed to each other, and then we were on again, off again in my 20s in grad school, and right now we're kind of just talking because I don't have as much free time. It's hard to relax. It's hard to chill like that when you've got kids around. And I don't have mm-hmm. the kind of chill time that I used to back when I was in school. Yeah. So, like, when I get high, I just want to sit around and I want to watch movies or I want to listen to music, preferably at nighttime. Uh-huh. That's when I like to wind down. I mean, that's the time I can wind down, let's be real. And instead of yeah. smoking, so that the, like no one, you know, the whole house doesn't have to know what my business is, yeah. I'm all about those edibles. Easier for me. Mhm. We get that a lot. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. a lot of the women in our social club. <coughs> excuse me. A lot of the women in our edibles? social club, they do not smoke. They eat edibles. I honestly think that the edibles market is where it's going to be. Like, I think that once recreational is legal everywhere, Mm -hmm. I think that edibles as a market is going to explode. Like, the way we have bars everywhere, I think that bars and, like, bars selling edibles are going to combine. Or just bakeries that that, um, specialize in that, you know? Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think that they are going to... I don't think the government is going to allow us to sell alcohol and cannabis in the same. Even when you, like, travel to places like Amsterdam. Oh, they don't? Yeah, they have. We cafes, no, you, they, don't, they don't sell it at, in the same venue. One thing that you enjoy doing while high? Watching movies. Okay. What type of movies? Uh, what if I can get my hands on? Um, the last movie I saw when I was high was Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Have you heard of that one? No. What's that um, about? That one is It's nominated for Best Picture, and I'm, it's, Frances McDormand is going to get best actress for it. There's, there's pretty much no competition for her. It's hers. Mm-hmm. And then, um, it's just, it is, it's very bleak and dark, but it's also really, really fucking funny. <laughs> okay. It, so I it's haven't so seen, I haven't seen, uh, I want to, I think that if I had to place it into a category, I would place it into comedy. Okay. If I had to pick between drama and comedy, I'd pick, I would pick comedy. Okay. Despite the subject matter being so bleak. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So, movies, definitely. Movies. I am a cartoon girl, like, all the way, like... When I get it out, I love to watch, like, adult cartoons. Like, I'm on this one cartoon now that is on Comedy Central. It's called Legends of Chamberlain Heights. And it's oh, about I know these that one. Three, it's about these three teen, teenagers. Um, uh, and Chamberlain Heights is, like, um, a neighborhood out on the, west, uh, on the West Coast. So everyone actually talks with, like, a West Coast accent. So it is <laughs> so funny to me. And it's two black kids, and then they have I'm like check a it white. Out. Yeah, and then they have like a white best friend, so it's the three of them, and you know they just pick on each other all day. Like you know they're boys, you know they want to have sex with the girls, and it's yeah. just so funny to me. But like I'm really obsessed with like cartoons. I think one day, honestly, I'm gonna learn animation and create a yes. cartoon. Yes, 
because I have like I've always like loved cartoons and now that I'm an adult and like there's adult cartoons like there's so many that I like love like Big Mouth is really good too that's cool Uh, I'm a big fan of Cartoon Network yeah (laughs) nice have you have you seen Big Mouth on Netflix um no I haven't I recommend that one okay Big Mouth yep check it out I'm gonna check it out then go ahead baby what are you? I am the hormone monstrous. <laughs> if you're here to tell me how terrible being a woman is, the Statue of Liberty and my mom already covered that. The French are full of shit and your mother's a woman in decline. You're on the rise, girl. I am. But you'll have to make some changes, Dumplin. For instance, what the fuck is this? What is your favorite thing to listen to while high? So, if I'm listening to music while high, I like it to be pretty mellow. So, I'll listen to something like Night Cop or Tangerine Dream, which is like, it's like chill electronic music. Mm-hmm. Pretty low key. Um, I also like to listen to a lot of podcasts. I got really obsessed with them over the past two years. Oh, what's your recommendation? Give me one. The Read. Oh my gosh, yes, I love them. I love them. <laughs> I love that you know, it's long and they, it's just always a bullshit session. That There's never really yeah. like a topic. It's like you can just turn it on and then you can come back to it later and it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. You can you don't have to pay such close attention to it like it's an NPR yeah. podcast. Like you can just have yeah. it playing while you're in the kitchen or while you're driving. And yeah. I mean, they are just, they are funny. Like seriously. They are so funny. Like, I'm They're just, like, so sitting funny. there, like, laughing by myself, you know, while, <laughs> while listening to them. They are seriously the perfect duo. It's so crazy because Nacia and I used to send each other videos of Kid Fury before he started the podcast. He was a YouTuber. Oh, I didn't know that he was um, I knew he was a blogger. I didn't know he had a YouTube channel, though. He has. Yeah. He definitely has star quality. He does, exactly. I'm telling you, he was a YouTuber and he did like comedy videos. Mm, so I can see that. How mm-hmm. I, that makes sense. How I found him, get like whenever your, your edibles really like kick him, you just want to like watch like a three minute funny thing. Yeah. Go on YouTube and um, look for Kid Fairy Shit Gay Guy Say. Bitch. Bitch. Oh, bitch. Put this in your bag. I'm only looking. For friends. Trash. Trash. Look at this trashy bastard. Trashy fish. T rash. Girl. Girl. Girl, Girl please. To, to close this out, what advice would you give a first time smoker? I wouldn't do it by myself if it was, if it was my very first time. I would have to okay. have a friend with me, someone who had already, who already knows what, you know, what, what they're doing. And, um, just because, just, you know, if you're anything like me and you like to just relax, I would just do it at somebody's house or, like, a dorm room or um, maybe if you're outside someplace, you know, someplace with a view, uh-huh. someplace comfortable. You could just, like, sit back and have a nice conversation, maybe listen to some music. That's the way to okay. do it. Yes. You know? Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to go party after your, I wouldn't try to go party your first time. Yeah. Definitely, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. Thank you this so much. Was a really good spark and talk. Um, I'm still really high and floating. I actually have candles lit around me. So I've got the vibe for this conversation. Um, so thank you so much for your time and your honesty and, you know, for being a warrior in this fight. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) And thank you for doing what you do. Attention passengers, we've now reached our destination. We hope you enjoyed the flight and have a nice day.